Arguably the hardest part of creating the perfect build is the roof. Whether you've built a huge fortress or just a modest homestead, the roof is probably the most important part for developing depth, complexity and character within the build. On top of that, I heard from quite a few people that roofs are a struggle for them. So today we're going to be going over five simple tips to build better roofs. So without further ado, let's get started. One of the most important factors in building a good roof is your SSO, shape, size and orientation. Ideally, you should have an idea in mind for the shape and size of your roof you'd like to build, though if you don't, your SSO is often dictated by the size of your build. If you're struggling with walls, I'd definitely recommend checking out my Build Better Walls video to help with that, the card is in the top right corner now. Firstly, let's take a look at this basic 5x5 house. This is a very simple shape, but you can still do something interesting with this. One of the most important things to do when building roofs is to not just fall into the trap of just building one large roof. It's almost always better to build smaller ones, which is exactly what I'm doing here. As you can see, by building multiple smaller roofs of different sizes and orientations, it helps to break up the roof of even a more basic structure like this and create something much more interesting than just a standard large roof. What about something a bit more complex, like this Aquilonian build? I've defined the core shapes of each room with the walls and this will heavily inform the shape and design of the roofs above them. Again, I make a concerted effort to construct smaller, separate roofs, and by keeping these roofs separate from each other, it helps to add a more interesting element to this roof design. Another example is this flotsam design, which has a fairly complex looking roof design, but it's actually really simple, as it's defined heavily by the shapes below it. The size and shape of your base plate will always influence the SSO of your roofs, but as a general rule, always try to opt for smaller, separate roofs that don't always face the same way, to make something a bit more interesting. Next is connections and separations, a fairly simple concept that can help to develop a bit more character and complexity in your roof designs. Let's take a look at this black ice build, it's a simple cross shaped design. Now, if I choose to join this roof in the centre of the build, it's fine. It's not an amazing roof design, don't get me wrong, but it works. However, let's instead redo this roof design, treating each arm of the cross as its own separate room, connected by the central section. Rather than having everything run together and connect, I've instead sloped the roofs up and down over the arms, which helps to create a bit more definition between the sections, and overall make for a slightly more interesting design. The choice to connect or separate parts of your roof design is a fairly small one, but it's a smaller tip that adds a lot to the overall complexity and character of your design, and it actually does a lot more than you think it would, especially on builds where the roofs are on similar levels, but you choose to keep them separate rather than connecting them together. Next, another simple one, contrasting materials. This is a fairly basic design idea that works to create a more striking appearance to the build overall. For example, this Yamatai build works quite nicely with just the Yamatai set, but if we choose to replace the Yamatai roof pieces and awning pieces with storm glass, it creates a vastly different atmosphere and a much more visually striking design. This concept works for tons of different material combinations. One of my favourite is stone brick and tiled pieces. It's a very rustic combo, but I think it works really nicely for builds designed like this. Also, Aquilonian walls and Argosian roof pieces are really, really good together. They work really nicely and they create a contrasty build that stands out proudly. You don't always need to contrast your materials, but if you want to create something that's a bit more visually impressive overall in your build, then contrasting materials is something to bear in mind. Next, for accents and details. These are all the little things you can do to add bits of architectural flair to your build. Firstly, let's take this frontier house for example. This is a 3x8 rectangle with a roof design that would be extremely boring. However, by adding sloped sides to create roof gables, and then transitioning them into the flow of the roof with inverted corners, it adds a little more shape to the roof. I've also added rooftop intersections with wall caps on top of the roof, which also adds a bit more shape, though I generally don't really do this as I'm not that big of a fan of it. The gables look really good on the interior as well. 
In general, using gables, especially in combination with roofs of opposing shapes, sizes and orientations, does wonders in creating an architecturally impressive roof. Looking back at wall caps, some of them do work really nicely for certain builds. I use this particular design a lot for wizard towers and other magic themed builds, as it looks really nice. You can also add inverted wedges to the exterior of the roof, which I think works really nicely for Pictish style builds. Inverted wedges are criminally underutilised in both roof and overall house construction. They can add tons of depth and shape to an otherwise fairly boring design. Next up, rooftop caps. These pieces aren't just good for finishing off the centre of a roof, but they can be used to create some really nice gothic accents. I find this tip works okay for smaller builds, I can't say I'm a massive fan on the smaller builds, but it does really shine on your much bigger builds, especially cathedrals or castles. Looking at this smaller example build, I'm not a huge fan of how the rooftop caps interact with it, but if we come over to this large storm glass build, I think it creates a much more interesting design that both looks good and also seems to define the shape of the build much better. Finally, risers. Now I use these a lot on storm glass builds, but you don't have to just use them on those. They can also work nicely for a lot of other designs, Yamatai, Terranian, pretty much anything you wanted it to work for. I find that risers work best on elliptical or round base plates, and I achieve it by creating an internal perimeter of ceilings, and then building large roof gables that rise high above the build, and then I usually construct a smaller internal roof within the risers, which creates a really interesting shape. Now, stability can sometimes be an issue with these designs, but when this concept is combined with other rooms and structures with risers, the roofing looks incredible and works really nicely. These risers can also often catch the light escaping your build, which looks great when the sun is setting. You can also include a partial roof within the risers if you don't want to have to rely on pillars. This design looks a bit more violent due to the spike nature, but seeing as it doesn't require supporting pillars, it's a much more space sensitive option that gives off a very interesting impression. Finally, let's go over some unusual or otherwise difficult roof shapes. If you know how to construct the basic roofs for these more complicated structures, you should then find it easier to implement some of the other tips. Firstly, circles. Circular towers are fairly simple, in that you just need to mirror the pieces below the roof tile you're placing. If there's a square foundation below, then use a sloped roof piece. If it's a wedge, then use a wedge piece. This is easy to accidentally mess up, in fact I messed it up myself in this clip, but it's a very simple design to create. Next, elliptical designs. These base plates are really interesting and often lend themselves to some really nice builds, but the roof designs aren't always easy. Any build with wedges is bound to run into some issues somewhere with stability, and this will definitely be an issue with even medium sized elliptical base plates, but the core idea is much the same. Match the foundations below the roof pieces you're placing and don't be afraid to place ceilings underneath the roof apex to finish off the roof with inverted wedges. Finally, and perhaps the most difficult design, amorphous or asymmetrical builds. As you can see, this is a very complex base plate made out of round, square, and elliptical foundations all connected together. I'd say a design like this is probably the biggest test of your roof building skills, as even with 1200 hours building experience in the game, I still have to approach these roofs with a very trial and error mindset. Honestly, that's probably the best way to approach them. However, even though it may be difficult, this is probably the best way for you to test your understanding of how roof pieces interact with each other, which is a massive part of building interesting roof designs. Amorphous or asymmetrical roofs are always going to be the hardest roofs you can construct. However, once you are confident with them, at that point you can start to work in the other tips such as roof gables or risers, or even the rooftop caps that sit above the build, which will undoubtedly create an impressive roof. And there we have it, 5 simple tips to help you build better roofs. 
Thanks for watching. Roofs are often the most complicated part of any Conan Exiles build, and whilst no guide can walk you through exactly how to build absolutely any roof design you want, hopefully these tips will help you to understand how roof pieces interact with each other and provide you with various architectural designs and concepts that you can add to your roof designs. As always, you'll find all the links to my Twitch, Discord, Twitter, Patreon and NordVPN discounts in the description below, along with credit for the music used in this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, I put out at least two videos a week, so there's always plenty of content to come. If you have any suggestions for future builds, I would love to hear them in the comments below. As always, a massive thanks to our patrons Sir Dialot, Randar, Connor, Blue Ivy, Velma, Torn, Eagle Rose, and Meryl224. Again, thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.